dramatic impact of improving energy efficiency and decarbonisation prompted DMVGL to commission its inaugural energy transition outlook, which charts how our energy mix is likely to be transformed by 2050. The report is already stimulating debate and praise amongst key industry players. I was very impressed with the report indeed, and it's certainly my feeling that it is one of the best, if not the best, uh, reports of this kind. I think it's very exciting, it's very interesting. Um, it presents, as we said on the panel, a lot of challenges. It's nice to see that uh, DMVGL has, has gone to the effort and, and really tried to compile an amalgamation of, um, of input on, on the global energy transition. I really welcome it. I had a great fun talking about it in the panel with my fellow colleagues there. And I think it's something about being able to be bold about what we think a forecast can do for 2050. The launch day in London started with an appointment at international business network CNBC. Remy Erickson joins us. He's the CEO of DMVGL. Nice to see you, Remy. And then it was on to the Bloomberg Auditorium, where stakeholders in the energy industry were presented the findings of the outlook. The report says humanity's energy demand will peak in 2030. Half of new car sales will be electric by 2035 and renewables and fossil fuels will have an almost equal share of the energy mix by 2050. With all sides of the energy industry represented in a panel, there was constructive debate on the speed of the change. What was interesting today, uh, sitting on the panel, is, is that we're all really not in conflict with, with the views presented by DM, DMVGL. Um, we were in violent agreement, as I said, uh, during the discussion. Um, the only issue probably is just the, the, the pace of change uh, rather than the change going to happen and, and potentially in, in the way through forecast. I would rate it overall as a fairly optimistic report, probably slightly more optimistic than I can be, but I think it's a first-class uh, contribution to this general discussion of how we go forward. A couple of years ago, if you'd said that offshore wind would be financed on a merchant basis in the UK, you'd have been thrown out of the room, yet it's been achieved this year. Uh, there will be such significant changes, it's very difficult to, to predict what they will be. I think there is a risk that it'll be the OECD world that moves much, much faster than predicted in, in, in the uh, forecast, and perhaps the non-OECD world lags. I think that what is very exciting about this report is that we have tried really to look at the technology trends and build them into the scenarios. And therefore, I think in the past, people have probably underestimated how fast technology can actually change things. And uh, having been in the renewable space myself now for uh, more than 12 years, I have to say that I think if people 10, 12 years ago said, well, are we going to see such a cost per electricity from wind or from solar? People said, no, 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 that they will not go so fast. But actually, that's what has happened. And therefore, I think it's very important to recognize that as even more resources are coming and even bigger companies are coming to the space, that will further accelerate the transition. Despite the rapid change, the report points to a future where we breach the limits as set at the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. I think first and foremost, we know even all the exciting stuff that is in the report means that we will not get to the 2 degrees C, we'll go above 2.5 degrees C. And I think therefore one could think this a bit about the, what we have left of the carbon budget in the world to spend. And uh, I think the best way to relate to that is a bit like a savings account. Uh, you can spend it all uh, in a few days or you can try to work sensibly with it and, and just spend it a little bit at a time. And we also know that there are some technologies that will have a hard time in making the energy transition fast. Uh, and therefore, those things where we can make the transition now should happen as soon as possible. And there, of course, we also know, for instance, like aeroplanes, uh, it will take a while before we're going to have those flying uh, just on solar panels and therefore of course we will need to reserve part of the carbon budget in the world for some of the things that we do need to spend. We have to work much more closely together because it's only with uh, technologies, industries, regions of the world pulling together that we have any chance of thinking we can beat the two degree limit.